Hey horror freaks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda. As you can see from the title of today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my full review with spoilers of Lisa Frankenstein. This comedy horror slash rom-com is now available in theaters. And as always, all my reviews are with spoilers. If you don't want them, just to see if this was worth it or not on the description box down below, it's going to be available my spoiler free review because I like to give you guys the two options. And giving that quick disclaimer, let's get into the video. Lisa Frankenstein follows a coming of rage love story about a teenager and her crush, who happens to be a corpse. After a set of horrific circumstances bring him back to life, the two embark on a journey to find love, happiness, and a few missing body parts. The film has a running time of 1 hour and 41 minutes and to give a brief summary the film opens with the title sequence and the credits being animated and this is going to be telling us the story of the character that eventually is going to become the creature and we have a very simple straightforward story of what happened to him all the way to his death and then we have the introduction of the characters we have the protagonist that is Lisa her backstory is that her mother was killed in front of her and her father eventually got remarried and now she has to move to a new place and now has a stepsister and a stepmom but the stepsister she's trying her best to try to connect with lisa but of course lisa is dealing with a lot of trauma because of what happened with her mother because she was there so they go to this party we learn that she has a crush on a guy from the school but she gets accidentally drugged during the party one guy tries to take advantage of her but she able to get out of the situation safely and because she's drugged she's trying to leave but this party is close to a cemetery that she likes to go and she ends in front of her favorite tom that is the guy that is going to be the creature and she expresses that she would like to be with him and of course by the trailer we know it's that, that this guy is going to be brought back to life because of a lightning and now he is in love with her the rest of the film what is going to be showing is having their first interactions she finding out how to deal with the fact that now a corpse is with her in her room and that he has a few missing body parts and they realize that if they kill someone they reattach it and then put him on a tanning bed that is going to make a healing process and it's going to bring him back to life so that's what is going to be seen we see him killing the stepmom i hated her i loved the actress but that character was awful so she deserved what she got they take her ear out then we have the guy that tried to take advantage of lisa on the party he gets his hand cut off for the creature and there's another body part that is taken from Lisa's crush and the film concludes with Lisa committing suicide once she realizes that she doesn't want to be with anyone else that is not the creature and since he's dead but back to life he accepts. She puts herself into the tanning bed that it does not work well, hence it's been electrocuting the creature, similar to the linings that are used to bring him to life on the original story, and she kills herself. And the film concludes with the creature and she is with him on a bench while he's reading to her and we see that she has some bandage and she has been brought back to life by the creature and that's how the film concludes. Now, as you guys can tell, it's a pretty easy story, it's pretty easy to understand, very straightforward, and it's actually pretty enjoyable. Now, the first thing that I want to say is that this film is not going to be for everybody, because this is a horror comedy slash romance comedy. So it's essentially a horror rom-com, and it definitely feels that it's more for teenagers rather than adults. And while I, I am 24 and I love the film, I do not expect for anyone that is my age or a little bit older to like the film and that's completely valid. But that's something that you should keep in mind. Maybe this film will not be for you because you do not enjoy this type of horror. But in my case, I really do. Now, the first thing that I like it was the opening, the title sequence and the whole credits since they are animated in black and white and also the design of the drawings. It reminded me a little bit to Tim Burton and I loved it. Secondly, the fact that the film takes place during the 80s, this brings 
a visual aspect that I love and it's the wardrobe and also neon colors. We're going to be seeing mostly pink and blue, something that is also featured on the film's logo. And I think that they nailed it perfectly and it's something that I truly like it and I definitely feel that make the film more fun and enjoyable because I definitely feel that if they have made it on the present day, they weren't going to be able to bring something to make the film feel special in a sense. I think that definitely make a difference making it on a specific time instead of on the present. I really like Lisa's wardrobe. She mostly wears black and I love it, her outfits. I also really like it, the story. It's of course another take into Frankenstein's. We have seen plenty of them, but I really like it this one because it kind of felt kind of unique in a sense. But once again, this film is not going to be for everybody, but I loved it. Now, of course, something that is probably going to be hard for some people is to get through that first half hour because since Lisa is dealing with the trauma and everything that happened to her mother, she is very awkward and shy, meaning that she's quirky but kind of annoying and hard to stand a little bit. There was a point that I thought if she's going to be like this the whole film, this is going to be a hard watch. But of course not, she changes and grows a little bit throughout the film. So that doesn't take long, but definitely make those first 30 minutes kind of a hard watch. And it's pretty slow. The film starts kind of slow and then kind of goes very quickly. And it's like, what happened? Like we went from zero to a hundred in just seconds. When it comes to the script, it can also be a little bit cringy, depending of course, if you like this type of movies or not. And it's like, did she really just said that? And also the jokes, and that type of humor is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. So of course that is going to be more personal, but it's definitely pretty quirky slash a little bit cringy. Even for me, there were some moments I was like, what? But still, I had a pretty good time. Now, of course, this film is not a masterpiece by any means. The acting is pretty decent. Of course, she had to be very quirky and, and also him. He basically doesn't speak until the very end of the film that he learns to talk. But for the rest of the characters, they are pretty decent. They aren't outstanding. They are also kind of easy to forget. They aren't that memorable. And also something that I really like it was, of course, the music, since the film takes place during the 80s. This is something that obviously is going to be featured and is classics from this time. And I think that they did a pretty good choice with the music that was featured on the film. Now, for me, this film is a 3.5 out of 5. Once again, this is not perfect. This is not a masterpiece, but it's not that bad either. If you like this type of films, you're going to love it. I have seen a lot of people that are comparing this one to kind of Jennifer's body and I can see it definitely. They have a similar vibe into it. So if you like Jennifer's body, maybe you're going to like this one. So once again, for me, this one is a 3.5 out of 5 and a 7 out of 10. I had high expectations for it. It was the one I was expecting the most this month and it did not disappoint me. Will I rewatch it? Most likely I will. When it's going to be available on a streaming service, I have no idea. And in case that you're not based on the United States, the film is going to be available on the United Kingdom on March 22 and on Germany on February 22. And so far it's now available on the Philippines, Brazil, Hungary, Australia, Canada, Finland, and the United States. And of course, Puerto Rico. So if you saw it, let me know what you thought about this film. Did you like it? You didn't? You were expecting something different? You're not going to watch it? Let me know. And with this, I end the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys on my next one. Bye. Game over.